grace, peace, and mercy unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this morning's message I've entitled, A Greater Light Has Come, Is Coming, and Will Come. And it's based upon the psalm reading for today, especially verse 3 where it says, Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. Let us pray. Almighty God, You have poured into our hearts the true light of Your incarnate Word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, it's dark outside. Families are putting up Christmas lights early to offset the gloom. Of course, the gloom has always been with God's people, so that the psalmist in today's appointed psalm for the day sums it up so well, saying, complaining to God even, you have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. So we respond in our time with Christmas lights. It's dark outside. Families are putting up Christmas lights early to offset the gloom. Read the headline, the variations in the newspapers from all around the world. They're saying the same thing. Now, you don't necessarily need to read the headlines. You observe it in your own neighborhood. You might even observe it in your own church. I mean here, you see that we have the glorious Christmas lights on our Christmas tree up early. I mean, usually we don't get around to that till the second, maybe even the third week of Advent. But this year, people are saying it's not too early, not with the year that we've had. My own family, is also swept up into this culture, but maybe not as early as some, where the pumpkin across the road was thrown into the green bin the morning of November 1st, and Christmas lights went up that very afternoon. Decorating with lights gives you a bit of a boost. Campaign calls for early Christmas lights to boost mental health, reads a BBC headline. And you know, there's, of course, some science to it. Light can push back the worst of seasonal affective disorder. But sometimes you need a light, greater light, a greater light than even the Griswold family Christmas display can generate. There is a greater light needed to push back darkness more oppressive than anything that this world understands. It is the darkness of sin, death, and the devil. There is a darkness of hell, which Jesus himself describes as the utter darkness. It's the darkness that you not only see, but it is a darkness that you can feel, and you feel it well up from the depths of your soul. We know the darkness. We experience the darkness. When we review our catechism and the Ten Commandments and the Holy Spirit is working through that Word to bring us to holy fear and repentance. This is to be a constant exercise in our Christian lives. But to be intensified during this Advent season where purple is the color of royal mourning and repentance is displayed. We'll get a special aid to promote our repentance in the Advent season as John the Baptist makes his appearance for the next couple of weeks in our readings as foretold by Isaiah the prophet revealing the darkness of human sin and of consequent death. A voice says, Cry! And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. 
The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades. But John doesn't just preach law in the strict sense. John also preaches the light of the Gospel. So then in Advent 3, John testifies concerning the light. And in Advent 4, the angel Gabriel gives a message of hope concerning the hows of the Incarnation. We get insight into the hows of salvation in the Gospel reading today. Our Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, He could only do so as a human being. He could only do so in flesh. Jesus makes His triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus enters into Jerusalem to die and to die upon a cross have all ways to go. We see on the stole that I wear today, I hope that you can see it, we have this little picture here of the Lamb. It is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, as John the Baptist preached. And what is this triumphant-looking Lamb doing? He is bearing His cross. He's marching triumphantly because it is by a cross and His death that He wins salvation for the whole world. And He brings it to us. This little icon oftentimes is pictured with blood streaming from the bosom of the Lamb. And it's pouring into a chalice to remind us that we receive that life-giving blood of Jesus in the sacrament of the altar. We receive the true body and the true blood of Jesus Christ in the sacrament that we may be saved, that our sins may be forgiven. Thanks be to God, for we behold the light of the world. A greater light has come. A greater light is coming now. And a greater light will come in the future. How our Advent hymns lead us to sing of such light which is everlasting, meaning that the light has already come, is coming continually even today, and shall come into an eternal tomorrow. I quote one of our hymns, Creator of the stars of night, Thy people's everlasting light, O Christ, Redeemer, save us all and hear Thy servants when they call. We confess Jesus is our everlasting light in the Nicene Creed, begotten of His Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance of the Father by whom all things were made. In Jesus, there is light that is everlasting. The light, however, comes. The light acquires a face. We celebrate the light of a face breaking into the world. How the face of God, God the Son, how the face of God the Son shines. Most of His earthly life, of course, it is hidden. But at His birth, at His transfiguration, at His second coming, His face shines the luminescence powerful as the sun. What glory! So we might sing or hear sung soon in this Advent season, verse 7 of Him 332, Savior of the nations come. From the manger newborn light shines in glory through the night. Darkness there no more resides. In this light, faith now abides. That face, such radiating light, continues to abide, to live and be active from eternity to Bethlehem and to eternity again. To us now, verse 4 of today's closing hymn, 337, the night 
shall soon be ending. Verse 4 says, Yet nights will bring their sadness and rob our hearts of peace, and sin in all its madness around us may increase. But now one star is beaming whose rays have pierced the night. God comes to our redeeming from sin's oppressive night. His light. His light ignites the very light in our souls as sung in verse 1 of, O Lord, how shall I meet You? O Lord, how shall I meet You? How welcome You aright. Your people long to greet You, my hope, my heart's delight. O kindle, Lord, most holy, Your lamp within my breast to do in spirit lowly all that may please you best. I just last week, we had a baptism here, and we spoke of the fact that, that the baptized are the Illuminati. They are illuminated. They are illuminated by the Gospel. They are illuminated by the Christ. They are illuminated by the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that dwells within them. And then we think of the light as the light returns, coming as judge on clouds of light as we sing the advent of our King. As judge on clouds of light, He soon will come again, and His true members all unite, live Him in heaven to reign. Advent. You know, Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus. It means coming. His is an everlasting coming from eternity to God's people Israel, to the world assuming human flesh, to the world at the end, into our eternal lives. He arrives bearing salvation. Restore us, O God. Let your light shine that we may be saved. So while the world might be content, let the luminescence of their 40-watt bulbs driving a bit of physical relief through the chemical reactions in the brain, staving off major depression, while the world might be content with that, we have the light of the world shining brighter than the sun. This light shines upon us. This light bears salvation. This is the forgiveness of sins. Triumph over even the most evil of darkness. And the resurrection of the body. Oh, what wondrous light. Let us pray. Blessed are You, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And in this name of the triune God who lightens our hearts, May all of you be truly blessed this day as we enter fully into the Advent season. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.